Today on my adventure out to the day camp, I have a special guest, my oldest daughter, Erica. Hi guys, how's it going? Yeah, Erica's been uh, wanting to come out with me and uh, she knows that I do some bushcrafting and she, uh, she's been on you know numerous trips and outdoor adventures with me before, but today she wanted to come check out the day camp or see what, see what I've been doing out here over, over uh, the little short period of time that I've had this place. And we're just gonna go out there and maybe today hopefully work on our bench. We're gonna cook us up a nice breakfast on a, a cast iron skillet there, some uh, hash browns and eggs and bacon. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna spend some father-daughter time. So join us for the adventure. So guys, found myself a little piece of uh, shag hickory that I'm going to uh, just cut up a few pieces to take into the day camp. It'll be great wood to add to any bonfire we're doing uh, where we're going to cook up some steaks and just add a little of that hickory flavoring. So I'm just going to grab it and process it when we can. Erica's just out collecting some tinder so we can get our uh, fire going. And of course, Molly's by her side. I think this is the least amount of snow that we've had since I've actually come out here and uh, started my day camp. I know this day camp's not looking like much, but we're going to have, uh, over the next while there is when all the fun's going to start looking at maybe building a nice bench right here uh, with a lean-to over top of it eventually. Between these trees, I'm probably going to string up like a uh, sort of like a kitchen counter, to some place that I could actually process food, and a space there where I can actually store some wood. I could uh, come out, split some wood, store it, so that when we have a fire, we're not doing this every single time we come out. With. What you got there, kid? Some twigs, some uh, kindling for the fire. That's it. Nice thin stuff. Okay, he's gonna get better. So I'm just uh, just teaching Erica here how to uh, do some feather sticking, so that we can uh, use that for kindling to get the fire going. And I've given uh, given her use of one of my old knives, which is still quite sharp. And I'm using my new Triple XX one. And yeah, we're just gonna there again, hard oak. Uh, we should be doing something that's a softwood. So basically, with any fire preparation, you want to make sure you have different uh, sizes of wood. Uh, you should always start with like a pencil lead thickness and then uh, work your way up to maybe a pencil and then maybe something the diameter of a dime or and just keep stepping up like that so that your fire has a chance to build. But having, uh, having curls is a very important uh, thing to have also because it's very thin, very dry wood and it's actually going to catch really good. Show them the curls you got going. It's actually looking pretty good. First time. Good job. Up. And even the ones that fall off here, Erica, they're okay to use. Uh, we'll just put them on the pile of birch bark once we uh, process our birch bark shavings. Easier to keep it on the corner edges, eh? Yeah, I, that's why I keep working my way around. All right, so I've shown Erica now that we're, we can baton some wood. And we got some, uh, there again, white oak. Don't be afraid to hit it. Try to keep your knife level. Okay. Yeah. And keep whacking that tip. Okay, we got Erica doing take two. Woo! Lots of space there. Okay. Yeah. 
There you go. Now grab one of them and process it into a smaller piece. Oh, it's a little easier when it's uh, Yeah, well, it's a smaller piece, of course. One more? Sure. Cool. So, Erica. Yes. Is this bushcrafting thing just for guys? Definitely not. What should all us bushcrafting guys do? Bring their ladies out. Bring your ladies out. Oh, yeah. So guys, this isn't a challenge, but I'm putting a challenge out there. All you bushcrafting guys, take your ladies out into the bush to your day camp, show them how you make fire, and cook them a breakfast or a nice dinner, and who knows, maybe you'll have a partner, or maybe they'll start their own YouTube channel. Woo! There's, a, there's one lady I follow there online, um, uh, oh, what's her name? Bushcraft Lily. And she's got, I think, like somewhere around a million uh, subscribers. And she's over in uh, Europe somewhere. I think she's like from Denmark or Sweden or something like that. And she, uh, she gets out here and she probably makes me look like a rookie. Keep it up, Lily. Girl power. Okay, Erica, what are you working on now? Scraping some birch bark to create some uh, fire starter powder. So one of my last episodes you seen, I, uh, I had collected uh, some birch bark and I kept a little stash of it here at the day camp. And oh, just, for, <laughs> just for this fire starting stuff. And so what Erica's doing, you to... can see she's creating a little pile of uh, birch powder there. That's it, you're doing it perfectly. And that's what we're gonna shoot some spark onto with our uh, with our ferro rod. Okay, Erica, shoot me a practice spark. There you go, good. Okay, so now you're gonna wanna put that on over at that dust. Get it closer, a little closer, and pull the ferro rod. There's a little wind. Oh. Oh, you got it. You got it. You got That's it. Enough. Oh, Stop it. oh, it went out. It went out. Because I kept going? Yeah. Take three. Okay. Take four. We got a little <laughs> more dust here. trying to direct it yep. at the but I don't have very good aim there you go you got her Woo! okay so now let's get a little bit of birch bark on there get it keep it keep it going that's it get all the smalls on there and then to the little twiggies that's it keep it going small twigs these guys yeah just get them all under. And any of this small stuff here that we, uh, feathers, or that we, uh, batoned. Yeah, keep her feeding, keep feeding. Feeding the fire. You know, I think I can do that myself one day. I think you can. Well, you did it. You had the flame going. It's just that wind kept blowing it out. So, but we got her. We got her going. Okay, Erica's never set this saw up before. Let's see how she does at the Agua Canyon. Let's uh, do some experimenting here. Seriously? Yeah, you got it right. I got it right. Yeah. Yeah, and that snaps in. Huh, Look at that. Even for the newbie. Even for the newbie. You've never set that up before, right? Never. See, even a beginner can do it. Awesome. That's really cool. Let's go cut down a couple trees and make a tripod. All right. So we're just going to collect, uh, collect some wood. I want to use live standing for this because we're going to make a tripod for over the fire. 
gonna start by this tree and this tree. I'll do the first one to show Erica, and she's gonna do the second. Hey, Molly. Come over here, bro. So the next step of our mini bush bushcraft training, I'm going to show Erica how we're going to make a tripod so that we can get a kettle hanging over the fire, boil some water up and make some coffee. At so time. I cut up them, or Erica and I cut up them three pieces of wood and I cut them to be about the same length. Uh, they're about uh, five and a half feet tall. Hopefully you got this all in frame, five and a half feet tall. I'm going to lay them down so they're all pretty even. Okay, so I've got all three pieces of the wood all at about an even length, even height. And the first thing I want to do is we're going to create a Canadian cinch knot. And that's going to allow us to, uh, to bind up pretty good on one end. Actually, one thing I need to do is I need to just cut myself a piece of rope here that's going to be long enough for this project. I'm using a new a new spool. I don't want to have too much. And as a bit of knife safety people, you want to be very careful of your knives and your tools so you don't do something like this because it can happen very quickly. Okay. So as I was mentioning, Canadian cinch knot. You can look that up on YouTube. One day I'll do a, a knot video on a few of my favorite knots. But this is a, a great way to, to get started. This knot. just a bit on this tripod here again this tripod will be something I'll have here at the camp I'm not going to take this apart after today it's going to be there we go. so once you've got your cinch knot done and that's all nice and tight then basically you want to sort of weave between each of your your three poles and you don't want them to be too, too tight because when you get to the point where you have to spread these things, if they're too tight, they won't, they won't spread apart far enough for you. So, yeah, and then you're just going to keep weaving. You got a good shot of this there. Nice and close. So you can see the weave pattern I'm doing here. Basically over and under, over and under. It's going to keep all these nice and tight and snug and then once I get through a couple times I like to I like to bind them a bit go around once there I'll finish up there
fish up here. A couple more. And then on the last one here, I'm going to just do a couple loops here. And I'm going to leave this excess string hanging right here. And you'll see what that'll be for very shortly. Okay, so now that we've got that uh, all weaved up at the top, now we can take our tripod and we're going we're to spread this thing out over the fire. And this is why I said you don't want it to be too, too tight because you have to be able to spread this. And this will allow you to basically set that over the fire and the excess string we're going to tie a, a notch to and we'll be able to hang our coffee pot right from that okay so just cutting a little notch that I can uh, hang from the tripod and this is going to allow us to hang our coffee pot and I'm just putting a bit of a recess in there so that the once I tie that rope around there it'll be nice and tight and won't slide off of the uh... here again I'm using uh, green wood as you can see because I want this to last a while oh smoke in the eyes <laughs> smoke. our fire's going nice so we're gonna have a nice pot of coffee soon <laughs> <laughs> gotta work for the good things kid you gotta do work for the good things but once this day camp is all set up here in the future, it'll be a lot easier. That's once okay, out, worth the wait. You know what? It's part of the fun of the adventure, right? That's what I always say. All good things are worth it. It's worth the effort. And people, it's very important. Your day packs, make sure you carry a first aid kit. Uh, let me say this little cut although it should stop bleeding it looks worse than it is but uh it doesn't want to stop bleeding because i just keep working the hand I tried wrapping kleenex around it and stuff but yeah clean out the system a bit all right so you can see here got a nice little notch that i've done around that so i could tie my rope to it and then i'm going to hang that here and it's going to hang over we're just going to hang that over the fire with our uh, coffee pot on it and we'll be able to uh, get our coffee boiling. All right, Let's tripod set up. Is this done? Got our kettle hanging over top. Get some water boiling here that we can start preparing our uh, breakfast. Need to do some hash browns. Uh, Got to get them rehydrated. And then uh, we can start cooking some... Uh, some delicious breakfast makes it all worthwhile. So how long we've we been out here now? Probably hour and a half. Yeah, yeah, about an hour and a half. We've been out here uh, just uh, getting all this prep stuff. This is actually stuff I've been wanting to do at the day camp here, anyways. And so I have to learn a lot today. There we go. And it's always uh, fun having a partner, especially when that partner is uh, one of your children. Yes, I have another daughter that's uh, going to be getting married in September. And uh, we've been doing a lot of work with that going on. And this is a nice little escape for all of us, isn't it, Molly? Right? Getting ready to add some coffee to the uh, coffee pot in a minute here. A little tip for uh, you people that head out and you go to hotels or motels. And they've always got little, with the coffee maker, they've always got little packets of coffee. Well, you know what? Don't leave them there. <laughs> You're paying for those by paying for your room. Grab them and take them with you because, you know what? It's just another way you can make coffee without having coffee grounds in your pot. And especially if you're treating people like I have Erica out here today, she might not like coffee grounds in there. So this will here, here will make sure that she doesn't actually get any coffee grounds. So yeah, save these things if you go to hotels. Or you can also buy them in stores. I believe Maxwell House sells uh, packets of uh, coffee already in filters so yeah give that a try just a quick little tip for you for making a nice coffee out in the field all 
Okay, so a lot of you might not know this, but there is a proper way and a not proper way to cut wood to minimize how much effort you actually use. You take a look at what Erica's got. She's got that saw blade in there at about a 45 degree angle on the wood. If you go 90 degrees, you're cutting through less distance. Okay. Straight across it. That's ah. it. Yeah. Now you're only going across half the distance, right? <laughs> I'm such a noob. I don't think I've ever seen anybody cutting wood standing or sitting down. <laughs> well, it's a weird spot. That's it. Pushing down with your left hand so when it gets to that point it'll, it'll keep that open and it'll break for you if it has to. Okay, so we got, uh, we now have coffee ready. Let's take a little shot here inside the pot. It was a full rolling boil a moment ago. I got one of those coffee bags in there. So that's just perking. And then uh, I put uh, a bunch of nice oak on there, nice and flat. And that's gonna give us a nice platform to get our frying pan going on here in a few minutes. The, uh, the potatoes are rehydrating. So they, uh, they'll be ready to go into the frying pan with some oil. Gonna cook up some bacon and man, we're gonna be rocking some breakfast shortly. All right, folks, coffee is served. Got the sugar and uh, cream or whitener there if you want one there. Perfect. Ready? You gotta go find it. Can you tell we like bacon here? Mm. <laughs> what about the dog? Oh, <laughs> go. ready? Up. Yeah, let's go. What about some for the cameraman? Let's find this piece for you. Um, um, oh, you make that look good. Another piece for puppy. Like you haven't seen this before. <laughs> now we got the uh, the eggs and the hash browns going to go on. Hey, what's the matter? Look at that face. How can you not give me bacon? Bark off that. There we go, people. It ain't fancy, but it's gonna flip my eggs. 30 second spatula. <laughs> that was awesome. I'm impressed. What kind of seasoning are you using? Uh, it's just a mixture of uh, seasoning salts and peppers and garlic and onion and a bit of paprika. Something I've made at home. And I call it seasoning salt. Awesome. <laughs> yep.
go, Molly. all separate. Just watch you don't hit that cast iron. It's going to be warm. Here we go canoe hound fans. Breakfast bush style. That doesn't make you hungry nothing will. Let's eat. <laughs> That's what Molly gets. Yeah. Can't forget the dog. Oh, that looks delicious. That's awesome. Molly thinks so too. Molly approved, okay? So let me tell you, my friends, it's always nice to get out and enjoy these little adventures by yourself. But you know what? Forgive me for eating my mouth, or talking with my mouthful, but it's always fun getting out here by yourself. It means even more sometimes if you get out with some family members or close friends. And the fact that my daughter wanted to join me and come out here and see what I do makes me feel special inside. Thanks, this kid. I love awesome. you. I love you too. And who doesn't like a good breakfast in the bush? <laughs> <laughs> hey guys really enjoyed my breakfast really really glad to be here today with my dad I had a really good time I think we needed this and uh, I'm excited to come out again maybe I'll be able to entice him to make me some steak next time <laughs> should have named her Maytag <laughs> like to thank you uh, today for joining us on this adventure uh, as I mentioned earlier it's always a good time when you have somebody to share these adventures with and as I said earlier somebody like family uh, or somebody that is family <laughs> you're not like family you are family but uh, you know what all in all it was a great day Erica Molly and myself got out here enjoyed a bit of this beautiful nature thing and uh, made this coffee worked on the camp a little bit uh, still not making a lot of headway on it but I'm just hoping that uh, you're enjoying my videos. Uh, if you have any comments, please do comment and uh, let me know what I can do to improve or what you would like to see for content in the future. Uh, please remember to subscribe, like, and share and hit that bell notification so that uh, you can be alerted to some of my future videos coming up. We're just getting ready to wind it down here for the day. Uh, it's a Saturday, cooler temperatures, snow is just starting to get a few little flakes starting to fall. So yeah, we're gonna enjoy the fire, finish up our coffees, and make our way back to the truck, and hopefully we don't get stuck in the farmer's field. So, <laughs> I know, right? Uh, last last adventure, I almost got stuck out there. It warmed up quite a bit, and uh, yeah, to say the least, I thought I was gonna sink my truck up to the axle. So, this is Dennis. And I'm Erica. And we're with Canoe Hound Adventures, and remember people, Keep, Keep the, the adventures alive. <laughs> oh, you forgot it is. Snap, right? Keep the adventures alive. <laughs>